Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Cam Look, your daily dose of the Cincinnati Art Museum. Each day, a staff member will be sharing a piece of art from the collection and posing questions for discussion. Please check back at 10 a.m. every day for new work and new chat. Let me introduce myself. I'm Sandy James, a senior carpenter here at the museum. I've been a CAM staff member for close to 15 years and work in the installation department, which consists of nine full-time team members, including preparators, painters, and carpenters. We work with our curators and designers to not only maintain the permanent collection, but to also, for the most part, produce and install all the temporary exhibitions. It's extremely humbling to be able to work alongside so many talented and creative people. Today I'm going to talk to you about Hiram Power's neoclassical carved marble masterpiece, Eve Disconsolate, which is placed so beautifully in front of the first floor window leading into the Cincinnati wing. The natural light that pours in from Eden Park suits her well. The sculpture was, car the sculpture was carved in honor of one of our most distinguished city fathers, Nicholas Longworth, one of Cincinnati's greatest patrons of the arts, and designed by the artist just prior to the Civil War completed in carved marble in 1874. Not only is the sculpture significant because of here in power Cincinnati roots, but it is also, in my humble opinion, one of the most pristine pieces in our collection. So perfectly flawless and beautiful. She's a sight to behold. The sculpture is also known as Paradise Lost or Eve after the fall, representing Eve succumbing to the temptation of the forbidden fruit. In Hiram Power's own words, his emotional and spiritual connection spelled out in a letter, he's quoted as saying, her face raised to heaven with an expression of deep contrition, one hand on her breast, the other pointing down to the serpent who recoils at her feet as if sensible to the accusation. Though the piece is weighted religiously like so many old world masterpieces are, I tend to connect emotionally with the sculpture just for the sheer stunning beauty of the female form, and also the impeccable craftsmanship it so clearly represents. One of the advantages of being surrounded by so many stellar pieces of art on a daily basis is the fringe benefit that comes with having an emotional connection with so many pieces of artwork from all the genres in the museum. I believe most of the staff members of the museum share these sentiments. I'm not sure whether this resonates with all of you, but besides the connections I have with the artwork emotionally, I tend to dwell on the process. How did the artists reach their creative sweet spot? When did the artist's craft turn to instinct? Where did they live and work? Who were their mentors and their muses? What inspired them to see things others couldn't see? Michelangelo wrote, the marble not yet carved can hold the form of every thought the artist has. With Hiram Powers, humble Cincinnati roots, came a young artist who chose to apprentice with a wooden clockmaker, became enormously proficient at carving wooden figures, and ultimately found his passion for the art of sculpture to become one of the great sculptors of his time. An epic story that's worth looking into like so many others. So next time you come to the museum, feast your eyes on Eve, Eve Disconsolate. She'll stop you in your tracks and I can only hope that you and your loved ones are staying sane and healthy through this crisis, this pandemic. Take care of each other, and thanks for listening. Cheers.